first non-profit online public broadcasting network and home of culture and entertainment. At GTP, we bring you the best of Gambian creativity right to your doorsteps. Sell your products and services to millions of Gambians and friends of the Gambia via our online radio, TV and newspaper. Advertise your business and watch your clientele grow like never before. Our content from the Gambia gets the diaspora hooked up to our screen whilst those in Gambia love what we bring for them from afar. This gift item on the agenda is the opening prayers, then opening remarks, first speaker, the gonga on the cooperative state, question and answers, operationalization and relevance of the cooperative state to the well-being of the citizens. That will be today, Saturday. The program is going to be a two-day program, uh, today and tomorrow. So tomorrow, we will have the opening prayers as first speaker, review of the Constitution, code of conduct, then question and answers, final session, then the tax ahead. So we will have our speakers, that is uh, Mr. Idi Jalo, will be the speaker for today. So. My name is Lamin An. I will be stepping in for Aminata Korea as the host. So let us observe the first item on the agenda, that is opening prayers. So we all pray in our own ways. Thank you all. I would like to welcome you once again to this program. As we all know, it is a training that is to enlighten uh, the members, more especially the new members. So as we all know, it is our responsibility to save the Gambia, the country we want. So for that being the case, we have to come together, share ideas, to be trained so that we can also go back and train others. So for that, uh, in that note, uh, we will have Mr. Idi Jalo, who will come uh, tell us some of the quotes, uh, uh, so some of the things behind the cooperative state that is in the Gonga, how the Gonga want to save the Gambia, and how we are going to understand what is inside the Gonga. Because uh, we all know since this gonga was out, only few people have access to this gonga. So today, you people are lucky to be among the ones who will hear directly, tra direct translation from Mr. Idi Jalo, who will tell us some of the importance of this gonga and why we need to go on with this. So on that note, I would like to call on Mr. Idi Jalo so that he can come and speak about the gonga on the cooperative state. So Mr. Jalo, you are welcome. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, I am here not to present a paper and not to lecture. I am here to exchange ideas with you people so that together we'll all grow from the level we are to a higher level. That is the essence of such interactive discussions. Before going to the gonga, I would like to throw a question to the floor. And it is for, it is for each and every one of you to try to give an answer if there is. If there isn't enough answers, we will still take what we have from the few of you who have responded and then look at it critically. The first question for today is, before continuing, should I continue to speak in English or should I use our local languages? Which one will suit you best? Which one is better for you? 
in the English language. Those who cannot speak English, what language can they speak? So that I will be able to... Wolof and Mandinka. Yes. So what do we do? We go for Wolof and Mandinka. Yes. I will ask questions in English briefly, then switch to Wolof and Mandinka yes. for all of us to understand what we are talking about. Yes? Point well noted. Uh, the first question that came to my mind when I was coming to this gathering here was what is the What is the most crucial thing we want to achieve as human beings? Thing we want to achieve as human beings. Anyone with an answer to this question? Yes. Uh, let me know. You meet. You meet. Lang <laughs> So, Momo, ya are long for your job. Is it a blue wind? You know, is it a job? Okay, do you want that? That's what I have to check. Yes, 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 yes. Anyone with an answer? Uh huh, sovereignty. Ninko sovereignty. Any other person? Liberty. Liberty. Uh -huh. Success. Success. Mm -hmm. And who else? Sovereignty. Liberty, success, and who else? Yes? Freedom. Mm hmm Right to life and the pursuit of happiness. Right to life and the pursuit of happiness. Pursuit of happiness.
Independence. Yes. Is that all? Okay. Thank you. Peace, unity, and progress. Peace, unity, and progress. Yes. Peace, unity, progress. and progress. Yes. Respect for all mankind. Yes. Liberty, dignity, liberty, and prosperity. Liberty, dignity, and prosperity. Okay. Thank you. So, these are the things that we all yearn for as human beings. Someone said sovereignty. Another person said liberty. Another person said success, freedom, right to life and the pursuit of happiness, independence, peace, unity, and progress, respect for all mankind, liberty, dignity, and prosperity. This is our human desire. This is our human want. And all these answers are correct. None is wrong. But what is it leading us to? Is there anything that it leads us to? These answers put together. Where do they lead us to? To becoming what? I think I will have to say it leads us to becoming humanly human. It leads us to becoming humanly human. You are humanly human if you treat each other with full respect and treat yourself with full respect. Where you wouldn't let anyone downgrade you make you subservient, become arrogant on you, tax you for a ride, disadvantages you, and at the same time, you also do not do that to any other person. When you fulfill that, then you have walked the journey of the human race. The moment the human being became conscious of the fact that he or she is above all other living animals because of that faculty he or she has, which is the brain, it pushed him further to strive 
to live a life where he will, he or she will realize his or her full worth. And as you journey that journey, to get to that level, know that equally, each and every other person on planet Earth is also working to reach that threshold. So the first thing that we must ask ourselves is why are we in politics? Why do we have to spend our time in political thought? What are the reasons? Is it a child's play? Or is it the route through which you will be able to define who the human being is? If it is the latter, then it means political science is not an ordinary science. It's the science in which your life, my life, everyone's life is being determined. For they are the custodians or it is the field in which the social structure of the human being is kept, is deposited. And because it is that body that creates such thinking it becomes important for each and every human being to participate in it. That is why it is said many a times that every human being is a political being. Because we all struggle to better our collective livelihood every day. The approaches may be different. The group may be different. And uh, before examining Gonga, this is why I wanted us to discuss this, and then we look at Gonga critically, and look at how Gonga and the cooperative state is going to help us to attain this goal without which we will be still be bothered with the old question of how to address the, the, the issue of the haves and the have-nots of society. What we must yearn for is an inclusive society where each and every individual is seen to be given his or her inherent right of being an architect of an architect of society, working towards the building of the architecture of decent society. Uh, as it stands. We are saying the person in all this is seeking for one thing, trying to be human with human. Why are we saying the person is trying to be human with human? The last time we examined how we moved from the Stone Age to the Iron Age, to the industrial age, and now we are in the digital age. We have 
looked at the relationship between people during all these economic uh, phases of life. And we know in all the struggles that have been waged in the world, never has a struggle been waged which can be dubbed as the struggle of the human person. It is either the youth struggling to gain prominence at the expense of who I don't know, or the women struggling to get prominence at the expense of who I don't know, or the elders struggling. It is people segmenting society and struggling for prominence and take over society. It is not society itself looking at what is best and working to achieve that. This is why there is a lot of talk in and around the country of let the youth be given chance. Let the women be given chance. Let the elders give you. Is that the true construct of society? Is that what will move the world forward? Is that what will make us humanly human? Is that the route through which we can achieve our goal of becoming a dignified people on the face of the earth? I think something greater, something better is there. What is it that is going to give us a better chance of achieving this ideal of becoming humanly human? Is to look within us, study what society requires, craft it, develop, develop it into an agenda, discuss among ourselves, convince one another, and then finally look at the person or persons that you think you can entrust such a role. This is what will help our generations and generations yet unborn to solve this jigsaw puzzle that the human race has faced from inception to date. Broadening the discussion, there is no country on the face of the earth that has achieved this goal of becoming humanly human. You may be advanced technologically, but in the country, you have destitutes, you have people who are deprived, you have riots, you have upheavals in many parts of the world. You have a lot of uncertainties in our world today. Why? Because people feel threatened. And if someone feels threatened, what he or she does is to protect his or her territory. He does not go all out or she does not go all out to embrace others. What he or she does is to identify people that he or she thinks are within the same bracket with 
and form a protective coating against you, against other people. So you are still limiting yourself. You are still not working hard enough to achieve that goal of unifying the people, of catering for each and every individual. That must be the basis of all political thinkers of our time. And that must be the basis of all those who want to help in building a decent society, a decent world. This is why it is safe to say that the whole world is looking for answers. None has provided it yet. It can come from the smallest country. It can also come from the country with the largest or second largest or third largest economy or whatever you might want to use to rank countries. But the human being, the human mind, cannot be limited to such. For we have something greater to work for. We have something greater to struggle to achieve. So now, may we examine the cooperative state, the Gonga. The Gonga seeks to provide answers to some of the questions. What are these questions? How can we be included? How can we be part of society? How can we play our role as responsible human beings that are here to help in making the world a better world? So they thought a cooperative state where people can work together for the benefit of each and everyone will help solve this problem. This is why some people do misunderstand and say the cooperative state may be that I want us to underline, maybe anti-private sector. We are saying no. No one is against any private sector. But where the private sector is weak and the demand for tax is high on them, what you will have is a lose-lose situation. They can neither grow to expand, nor would the people be given the facilities they need to live as dignified people. So the private sector, fine, there are players. They should be catered for as they are part of society and we want each and everyone to feel being treated equally as a human being. Therefore, it defeats the purpose to subject anyone to anything that will tend to dehumanize the person. But notwithstanding, we know the vast majority of people do not have the ability or the capacity to set up large enterprises. So what we need to do is to revisit our institutions 
and build an inclusive society by coming up with the cooperative state. And the cooperative state deals with education. Education has a component in it. Agriculture has a component in it. Industry has a component in it, or manufacturing. These are the components. And you may add plus health. Education and health falls under the rank of social services. They absorb finances, and it is the duty of every government to provide their people with education, with health care, with good infrastructure. But at the same time, they will have to rely on the people to build the economy. And who are the people they are going to rely on? They are going to rely on each and every individual in society. This is why we said agriculture should be given priority. In every country, there is a land mass. There is an area of land that is arable, that can be utilized for farming. Unfortunately, the majority of the land in the Gambia is arable. 95% of the land in the Gambia is arable. What we are saying is if we are ready to kickstart the economy, first to start with is to organize all the family farms, encourage the people by giving them farming implements, fertilizers, seeds, help them grow the crops that we would need and help in identifying markets and marketing their produce. Pay them back at market prices, not to pay them back at cutthroat prices. How are we going to do this? What is it that we are going to do to make this sustainable? We said we will start with a cooperative bank. What's going to be the function of this cooperative bank? The function of this cooperative bank is to have a direct link with the farming community, know what their demands are, cater for their demands at, and not ask for any profit. All they will ask for is the cost of official transaction. No profit margin will be levied on them. So that will help in making the farmer to maximize his or her income. 
not only will it help the farmer to maximize his or her income, but it will also give our industry a ready-made source of raw material. Because now the farmers will be assured that they will not be cheated at the end of the day. What the world market price states is what they are going to earn here. And then a state enterprise like the GPMB of yesterday could be buying all the granites in the country turn it into oil, some into margarine butter. The cells can be turned into board. Soap can be made out of it. That's the multiplying effect that the farmer would have participated in doing. And the industry, the GPMB, will just be doing, uh, producing the finished products. In that way, you will be employing people at the level of the industry. There will be a lot of economic activity. Some will be working on the soap factory. Others will be on the oil producing site, and the rest will be on other things. You will also have Gambians marketing these products, these finished products, to the countryside and to the big towns and cities. Imagine the amount of work that that activity has generated from helping the farmer with farming implements, creating a conducive environment, facilitating him to earn enough from his labor, thereby giving him the potential to buy products that you are going to produce yourself at your industrial level. Uh, I think if that does not stimulate the economy, and if such does not stimulate the people of any country to work for their own well-being, Nothing else would. And you move from there. You go to the hardest. We all know we have a lot of small ruminants in this country. During Tobaski, we see a lot of rams coming from all over the sub-region. But we know in the Nyaminas, you have strips of land, wetlands, where green grass grows all the time. Can't these farmers, these same farmers, be given the opportunity? be given rams, goats, small ruminants, allowed to rear them, and help create a market for them, where they will not be dependent only on Tobaski, but you will have a complete statistics of the number of animals in the country, where they are, and you will be able to determine our 
meat consumption in the country, and then you will be able to know how many animals you should be buying from these farmers monthly to slaughter for domestic consumption. Once you do that, the farmer, the herder will not rely on Tobaski only. It will be a continuous activity. It will not be, uh, let me just buy 10 sheep, keep them, next year I may have 20 and sell the 10. No. They will be working hard to multiply their animal stock because they have a ready market that is functional year round. These are the type of things that you need. Still on agriculture. We have a river cutting right across the Gambia. We have mangroves in almost the whole country. I went to Lemban the last time with some people. I visited an aquaculture farm. And uh, this gentleman who is running this aquaculture farm is breeding fish. He harvested some in our presence. And that can be replicated throughout the country. That's another means of employment. That's another means of raising funds. If it is well organized, we can have our fish meals. Prepare this fish. Have our fish factories. Package them properly for domestic and international consumption. People in some parts of the world are creating islands. They are bringing in rivers. We have a navigable river. The only navigable river in West Africa is in the Gambia. The Gambia is the only country in the whole of West Africa that has a navigable river. No other country has that. Still on the cooperative state. Imagine the number of people that would engage in such an activity where the price is fair, where the labor being done is not done just for the sake of it. Wouldn't people venture into such an activity? Of course they would. Moving away from fish, oysters, we can breed oysters all over the country. People are doing so. So we have a lot of seafood that we can produce. All we need to do is to encourage our farmers, is to encourage our fellow Gambians, train them, show them the path, help them to start, provide the market. We can turn the Gambia into a poultry heaven where we will have poultry farms all over. 
train them. All big villages. They will have a small poultry house. They will produce the birds they need to feed themselves. They will produce the eggs. Some can be utilized here. Others can be exported. With all this, we are importing chicken. We are importing eggs. We are importing meat. Something that our forefathers we are not doing because they had enough of it. What went wrong? Why do we have to import all of these things? Is it true, as people would normally say, that the youth are lazy, that the people are lazy, that, that the people don't want to work, that the people want to sit down, fold their hands, and wait for food on the table? No, I don't believe so. Every person wants to be humanly human. No one person wants to be a beggar. No person on the face of the earth wants for someone else to decide for him or her whether right or wrong. What we want as individuals is to consult one another and arrive to conclusions that will best suit us. But that environment must be created. So it is wrong to say any person is lazy, to call any person a person who is not willing to walk. It is for you who wants to build society to think of what to do to motivate that person to get up and do work. Because the same youth you accuse of laziness here takes the back way, go through the ashes. He wouldn't even think twice of his life. He does not know how to swim. But just because he has a dream to pursue, he wants to be treated as a human being. He wants to be considered in the society as someone who is integral. That alone is enough a motivating factor to make that boy or girl take that dangerous route and become either a prey to the fish in the ocean or on arrival being greeted by encampment in an open prison, sitting down for three, four years waiting for documents in order to pursue their dream. That dream can be achieved here. That dream they're going to pursue in Europe, in America, it can be achieved here. It is for us to employ the, light, the right strategy. But you must have the leadership with the right mindset to be able to employ that strategy to make it work. And the cooperative state can make that work. Imagine
we say let us take education for instance and say we go right to GTTI which is a technical institute and you give them a research component tell the agricultural side of it or the technical side of it to look for the tools that would be necessary for the for farming let them look at the tools that they think may be necessary for milking animals let them study what sort of structures should be built for the housing of proper poultry farms you engage them give them the resources allow them to live with the villagers let them tap information from them let them study together you think after one year two years they will not produce they will produce something in fact that is how science advanced Isaac Newtons and others that is how they advance they will go and think and do their writings then they will go to the smith and tell the smith design this for me cut it this way cut it that way and then they will put the pieces together and then have the instrument that they want that's what we need to do if all of these people going to GTTI were engaged in such you would think by now where would we have been we would have been able to produce all the farming implements we need in this country all the poultry machines we would have been able to produce them here and many light industries the machines they need will be produced locally but you must invest in local talent and if you are to invest in local talent you must help them to develop the expertise and help them to come together as shareholders in these small scale enterprises and that is the cooperative state you have trained them in school they have done their research they have got the answer to the problem now you have helped them after knowing what they need as capital to invest you have helped them to get that capital to invest the market is already there that's our people the farms the industries that's the market and you link them with the farmers so they will be reinforcing each other all the time as they will be relying on farm produce for their sustenance the farmers will also be relying on their technical know-how to expand and develop their family farms this is the mutual relationship that's going to be nurtured in the cooperative state whereas you go to villages that have forest reserves woodlands what you do is you assist in helping them to maintain the forest in its natural state as a child I grew up in Bakau 
I was born in Bacow and I grew up in Bacow. What I knew in Bacow then, my son does not know today. Because then, when I wake up in the morning, after going to school or going to Dara and then school, in the afternoon all I will do is to walk 40 meters, 50 meters away and they get into the woodland, the forest. There are all sorts of, there were all sorts of wild fruit in the forest then. You can be in this small area, you will not even think of food. You will not even think of water. Because it's all there. There are plants, when you cut them, water drips from the stem and all you need to do is to open your mouth and the water gets in. You drink. You had all the wild food, such as Krujenjing, Dita, Neu, Hell. These are local names. But the grapes that Europe is using were well, once wild. They are domesticated. They domesticated them some time ago. And today they are producing them, they are exporting them. You could have done the same with Kurujinji. You could have done the same with Hill. You could have done the same with Dita. You could have done the same with Mampata. But no, we ended up cutting everything because we do not have any central planning unit that looks into the future. And because we do not have any central planning unit that looks into the future, we have lost most of the food we used to have which of course has some value so these are some of the things that the cooperative state must look at and see how to restore these things give it back to the community the community will take ownership of it and whatever benefit comes from it, it goes back to the community. And in that way, a village treasury can be built. The wood that is produced from the forest will be sold by the community and they will have an account where they will deposit all those monies. That money will become the wealth of that community, of that village. And some of the few small things that they want to do, such as building a nursery school, or creating a playground for little children, can be taken from there. Even the building of health centers or health posts can be taken from such m monies. That is what the cooperative state is advocating. Going back to where we were, in order to start this cooperative bank, you need resources. Where are we going to get these resources from? Of course, there is mining going on in the Gambia. So the mining industry, what it is giving us, should be deposited as sovereign national wealth. Of course, we know social security and housing finance cooperation is a place where our workers deposit their monies is a place where our workers 
deposit their monies, and the monies that they deposit is for what? Is for if they grow old, to take back for their upkeep. Those monies can be deposited in the cooperative bank, plus money coming from mining, plus money coming from other state parastatals put together will give you enough fund to start this cooperative venture. As the cooperative venture is also business oriented, it will be producing funds for its upkeep. So in doing so, in observing that, you will, you, by the time you finish doing what you are doing, you would have established a strong middle class in the country that are capable of buying the goods that are produced here. If you hear people going to the market and dealing ah, amut tay, tay dara amut. The person going to sell to the market, that's what she will tell you. The person coming from the market, tay dara man aman jigi apa. What are we learning from this? You know, sometimes we take these things very lightly, but we need to look at them closely. You are selling your product. You took it to the market and said, ah, I could not sell today. And, uh, today the clients did not come. Another person went to the market and came back home and said, ah, because it is expensive. What's wrong? What is the missing piece of the jigsaw puzzle? The missing piece is the person who went to buy from the market woman is not empowered enough to be able to have the purchasing power to drive the economy to buy from the market woman. And the market woman, because of her failure to sell her produce today at the market, tomorrow she may be unable to go and get goods to take to the market the following day. So then scarcity of goods becomes the order of the day. That is why it is always important to make sure you create a vibrant community. A community that can cater for their needs. That is key. That is important. Where you cannot do so, people will still continue to feel that they are either privileged or they are being left out. So therefore what this leads us is, what this leads us to is how do we democratize income? Because we've succeeded in democratizing elections. Each person goes to vote. Our collective vote determines who our president is going to be, who our National Assembly member is going to be, hmm? the type of government we want. Our collective vote determines that, not so. 
But do we have democracy in wealth building? No. You are left to go and fend for yourself. You are not being cared for. You are not being taken care of. But you are taking care of someone else at his time of need or at her time of need. Because you will wake up from your house, go and queue, go and vote for somebody to represent you, to work for you, only for that person to tell you, you go and look for yours by yourself on your own. Have you noticed that? Have you seen the trick? You, we as individuals, as Gambians, every five years, people will come to us, knock on our doors. Hey, you are important. Come and give me power. Once we do that, our importance ceases. Once we do that, our importance ceases, and his importance steps in. And the next thing what he will tell us is, you people are lazy. Go and look for work. Go and fend for yourself. He or she has forgotten that just a day ago, he came to us begging for work. instead of him returning such a good gesture to us, he decides to change the narrative and blame us for being lazy. For how long are we going to enjoy with that? For how long are we going to accept that? That is for you people to ask or answer during the question and answer session. This is not so this is not the time. For me to give answers to such questions, I have spoken for almost one hour 30 minutes in this session should have ended since 1.30. Now it is 1.46, so I may take a break now, and then after break, after long break, we'll come back here. And I would hope that you will ask all questions, anything, anything that you are in doubt of regarding the cooperative state, you should ask. Because what uh, questioning does, it opens up the discussion and it helps us to look at it more closely and give better answers. I thank you all for listening. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Idijalo. That was a brief explanation. So what we will do now, because it's almost uh, two, so we will go, we will have a break. Then when we come back, we have questions and answers. But before that, I would like to welcome the host, that is uh, Aminata Korea. And when we are back, I will hand over everything to her so that she can continue with her program. Thank you very much. See you soon. It's promotion. 
the Gambia's first non-profit online public broadcasting network and home of culture and entertainment. At GTP, we bring you the best of Gambian creativity right to your doorsteps. Sell your products and services to millions of Gambians and friends of the Gambia via our online radio, TV and newspaper. Advertise your business and watch your clientele grow like never before. Our content from the Gambia gets the diaspora hooked up to our screen whilst those in Gambia love what we bring for them from afar. This gives us a unique edge and separates us from the rest. If you want to be heard or seen by the world, contact GCP. We tap, nurture, and promote Gambian talents and businesses. Think promotion, think GTP. For all your event coverages, religious gathering, naming ceremonies, weddings, documentaries, music videos, TV and radio commercial and more. We also do design and print jobs of all types, logos, business cards, brochures, flyers, t-shirts, coffee mugs, banners, billboards, catalogs and magazines. We also do lamination and projector rentals. We are the first Gambian non-profit online public broadcasting network with over 300,000 active followers across all social media. Contact GTP on 750-3654, 750-3654 or 794-9214, 794-9214. One four four zero four five nine three six two one five or email us at gambiantalents at gmail dot com. GCP, the people's power. 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 Akakenu nyame. Akakenu nyame. You don't program with the mum dinalale. Gambian Talents TV. Arabo Araba. Kabotala nani. Fokajita luluka. Ninko akakenu nyame. Ni ado ni chosano le fere. Ninko ado ni chosano. Akita kwalti mu yano ka mabo tele na ni jamano. Molo mu yano kofa ya ado ni chosano lambake. Molo mu yano kofa na ya ado ni chosano lang bari mafin. Kankura mola manyo bito hani faka sebo yo. Nte kadi ture bina la lige kwa kwal natale mungu kwa ado ni chosano la kwala. Aninga mentalen TV ado.